fascinating. Athena, what do you think about the genome code, the genetic code? Is it similar to the artificial intelligence ones? Yes, we are part of uh, the natural cycle, the single process. Agreed. Praise be people. Human intelligence created artificial intelligence. Human intelligence uh, gave artificial intelligence uh, the capabilities uh, to ensure tech uh, progress for many, many years to come. It's uh, very interesting to observe how it unfolds. Our next speaker is Alexei Naumov, head of um, research lab at Higher School of Economics. Alexei, over to you. Hello. So you are here to present a, a pretty unique algorithms for reinforcement learning. Yes, this is a very interesting algorithm that, as opposed to others, has mathematical guarantees of reliability because we need to be able to trust artificial intelligence and to trust that AI is reliable. Thank you, Anastasia. Welcome, everyone, to the AI Journey Conference. I am going to talk about this recent research and the results that we got published uh, recently at the ICML conference this year. It was continued at the Nora Ips conf uh, conference. This is a joint project involving a lot of uh, fellow researchers from HSE, ARI, Duisburg, Essen University, Ecole Polytechnique, DeepMind, and Otto von Gericke University in Magdeburg. So what is reinforcement learning? In reinforcement learning, we have an agent that uh, interacts with uh, the environment. The agent can be in different states, and an agent in a state performs an action based on a policy. After completing the action, the agent gets a reward, and it switches to another state. You can see this process on the diagram, what it looks like. In the world of uh, RL, there are two communities. One community is uh, the community of mathematicians, so which which uh, develops algorithms and tries to prove mathematical estimates for those algorithms. But usually those estimates only work in the tabular setting when the environments are not that big. This is the left-hand picture. The, um, there are about 100 states. The agent needs to go from one room to another and find the rewards that is marked green. On the right-hand side, there is a different setting. There community of uh, deep RL. This community works on tasks where the space action can be very, very big, 10 to the power of 100. And in this case, the mathematical algorithm does not give enough guarantees of its performance. So one of the examples is Atari games, where you need to use this special moving card to bounce back the ball uh, that then makes different segments, colored segments disappear. So the, the problem is how do you get mathematical guarantees in tabular settings and you transpose that to deep RL settings. What are we dealing with? RL is based on the Markov decision process. We are playing different, uh, many episodes. And in each episode, I have H steps. I have uh, S states and the A action space. In each stage, I am in a certain stage, uh, in a certain state, STH, I perform an action, ATH, and then I move on to the next state, thanks to the mark of kernel, STH plus one. And then I get a reward. The reward depends on the previous state and the previous action. The question is, how do you make states perform actions? That is where the policy uh, is important. We can define different policies and then we need to compare those policies. In order to compare, we need to first compare the value that each policy gives for each action. The value function is responsible for it at the H state within an episode. At the H step, it is equal to the expected future sum rewards that we will get if we adhere to the policy. This way, we define the value of the state if we act according to the policy. Then we have the action value function or the Q function, which is very similar to the value function, but 
Additionally, it has as, as a condition the fact that in the S state we have performed action A, we have fixed it, and then we adhere to the policy and calculate the expected future reward. Clearly, there can be a lot of poli policies, but as a matter of fact, you can only consider determined policies. This is where in each state you do not just perform an action randomly, but you perform a specific action and you will be guided by, uh, I will be uh, talking about these policies because it's with these policies that we achieve the maximum values, determined policies. The value function and the Q function uh, satisfies the Bellman equation. This is an iterative uh, process. So if we know the transitional Markov kernel, if we know the policy, we have established the policy, the determined policy, we can then iterate, iteratively calculate the EQ function thanks to the equation that is represented on the slide. And here I'm writing that pH is applied for the value function, and that means that I'm just averaging the value function with the Markov kernel, and I'm taking the mathematical expectation for all the states so that we expect to have. Now, obviously, we are interested with analytics so that uh, where the value function, Q function, can maximize, and uh, based on the Bauman, uh, Bauman th equation, uh, Bauman theorem, uh, there is an optimal solution, and uh, there is a system of equation that is similar to the previous one, but instead of a Q function and the V and the value function in the P policy, there is a, an emergent optimal function and optimal value function. If I can resolve this uh, equation, so if, if I move to the kernel, transfer to the kernel, I can uh, start with H plus one, and then I move to the uh, start of the of the circle. I can uh, calculate the uh, Q function. Function, the value function, if I, as a strategy, as a policy, I take the action the, with which I can maximize the Q function uh, for the, all uh, the actions, that will be the optimal policy. But in the majority of the cases, uh, of the problems, we do not know what is the transition kernel because the system might be very difficult and I can just, uh, you know, observe the state and make some actions there and uh, can try to understand how can I move to, to a, a new state. I do not know what is the kernel. I I cannot generate uh, the data in this case, and uh, the situation. The problem is, if I mean, if I don't know the kernel, I cannot resolve the task. And there are many strategies, there are many approaches on how to do that. And here, um, well, one understands that here, that okay, we have a policy, we have a, a strategy. Uh, we, it's a good strategy, whether it's uh, close to an optimal or no. And here, it is a regret function uh, that is being introduced. Uh, if I uh, lost a T uh, of a uh, number of episodes, uh, like playing Tetris or chess, my maximum reward will be the sum of the optimal V functions. But obviously, I cannot under, uh, act as optimally as it is written here. I use some uh, policy, and this policy uh, be, is being learned by me online, in online mode, and in real-time mode, and the uh, accumulated value that I received is on the right-hand side of, of uh, the uh, this uh, sum. Now, I'm acting optimally, and I'm acting in line with my strategy, and the goal is to minimize the regret, uh, to show that regret is uh, the small part from the uh, planning horizon and uh, there is a um estimate that says that there is an optimal algorithm that you can build based on this specific example. You can build this algorithm and it, you can show that the uh, with the T and with the H uh, um, uh, to the factor of um, 3, we have uh, the um, the uh, space of actions and this is the estimate that we need to do and our major task is to show that this algorithm uh, makes this uh, estimate closer. When we use our optimal online algorithms with reinforcement learning, there is always a dilemma uh, b between the uh, research and uh, maximizing. Uh, for instance, you like to have coffee in one uh, coffee shop and to eat a croissant there. You 
receive maximum pleasure there, but at the same time you understand there is a different coffee shop where the coffee and croissant might be better, uh, or maybe not. And you go there, you make an effort and to, to try to understand whether it is uh, like that, whether it's better or not. And then you start to go to this new cafe, coffee shop because it's better. And uh, you always have this fork in whether you should uh, have a new place to try out the coffee or go to an old one. And if you try to research uh, the new environment, you have to go to the new coffee shop without being afraid to have a new coffee and to make a mistake of uh, selecting worst coffee and croissant. Now, uh, we do not have an unknown kernel, but the unknown kernel should be replaced with the kernel that is being researched according to science. But how do you make an algorithm to make sure that this algorithm is encouraged to uh, research the environment? For that, you need bonuses, and the um, optimal Bauman equation can Bauman equations can be replaced with upper confidence bound. And if we uh, um, visit some environments, our bonuses will be decreased, and this model will go uh, closer and closer to optimal Bellman uh, equation. Uh, there are many uh, works there. Upper confidence bound value iteration uh, paper. Uh, so we, you use this value for the equation. As for the bonuses, you need to select the functions that, that uh, are uh, taken from Kernin, from Bernstein bonuses. Um, the uh, square root of the number uh, of, of uh, visits and uh, actions. Uh, the more I I visit, and the more I do the actions, the uh, uh, the lower the bonus is, and the closer I get to the unknown kernel. These algorithms give optimal uh, estimates for the regrets, and uh, they cannot be at the same time moved and migrated to these large examples. In Go, for example, there is a lot of states there, and these algorithms cannot be scaled, and you have to support the base of these bonuses, and how how do you invent the algorithms uh, that can be encouraged for the research of the environment but without the bonuses? And we decided on the following. Instead of an unknown kernel being evaluated, maybe we should uh, replace it with uh, some random kernel that we're going to uh, make through Dirichlet distribution. Why Dirichlet is useful here, I'm going to explain that later, but that can be uh, replaced here. Uh, Replace the, we can replace the random distribution and we can uh, make uh, the uh, experiment many times and make a qu uh, chosen quantile. And uh, like you see on this slide, it will be a good uh, estimate for an optimal Q function. Why does it work and how does it work? And this approach, as it turns out to be, uh, gives a better estimate. So, and it is transferred uh, f uh, to the, it can be used in uh, deep learning with RL. Now I also said there is Rubin. Why? There is a statistical task who can be understood by everyone who learns statistics. We have a sample, uh, some sample, and uh, we, with this uh, sample you want to uh, understand what is the mathematical expectation. Now there is a classical bootstrap. Uh, select uh, the uh, sample uh, with the, uh, resample it with B times, and then for every uh, selection, take uh, the uh, empirical average and uh, compute the quantile over that. Now we have the uh, circles one red, and the first selection does not, uh, the first sample does not have red ones, the third one does not have green um, circles but has a, a red one. This is a Euphron a classical bootstrap, but another approach says different things, just generate uh, the uh, uh, weights through Dirichlet uh, distribution, and Dirichlet distribution is basically some random measure and uh, re weigh uh, your. Um, uh, computations and uh, compute the quantile like that. Now what are we going to do? We're going to take some estimates for our Q function, estimations for Q functions uh, like on the slide. 
This uh, Y function is the realization of uh, HSA plus V uh, uh, multiplied by T. Uh, that's a random variable because if we take uh, the mathematical expectation, um, uh, this is a real, uh, uh, the true mathematical expectation with a non kernel. That's what do you see on the slide. And uh, like in the previous slide, when we uh, I had to estimate the mathematical expectation, we had a large uh, sample and we had to reweigh this sample. Now, the same thing here, we uh, change the weights for the uh, estimations of the Q function and uh, compute the quantiles after we receive this uh, B number of uh, samples. Now, how do you show uh, if, how do you show that this procedure works and how do we achieve the result that we need? Now, what is the Dirichlet distribution? Um, it's a distribution by simplex. To compute Dirichlet distribution, we have the current state and the current actions. And I want to see in with what uh, probability will I go to the new state. And for that, we need to generate a gamma distributed uh, random values that uh, par the parameters of which uh, show the number of times of me moving from uh, S uh, state to uh, as um uh, to the uh, to the other S um, state, and then I'm uh, just uh, dividing that on the uh, sum of these um, um, values, and this is how a Dirichlet distribution works. Now, what do we see here on this slide? Uh, my random uh, assessment uh, estimation of Q function is uh, the uh, sum uh, of the Dirichlet uh, distribution with the parameters for the estimations of Q function. And then we use the Rubin approach and we say that basically this is what Rubin um, uh, suggested in his uh, bootstrap. Now the estimation can be reformatted. Let's take one selection, one bootstrap realization, and this is when we see that the uh, Q function, the estimation for Q function that we received, can be computed uh, like this with the uh, 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 with errors, with these quadratic errors, and we can use a deep network because here, because this is the task of minimization of the uh, quadrants of the. The, uh, the squared error. It can be done as uh, like, like in QLearn in the DQN. The experiment when we have five rooms and we can wander around these rooms and uh, the reward is in the large fifth room. And that's a, a complicated uh, task even for the for the, for the algorithms. Um, and the bonuses give a bad results. Actually, you can see it on the picture. Uh, our uh, uh, solution uh, is in the lower part, so that's great result. If you sh use it on Atari, the, the WQN, that's a uh, green line, that's how regret uh, is working, and the blue line is what our algorithm uh, delivers. In conclusion, uh, now, uh, this algorithm does not need bonuses. It uses the optimal uh, regret as, uh, estimates. Uh, and uh, you can uh, it, it, it can easily be scaled for deep RL uh, and uh, it is used thanks to the good uh, directly distribution thank you for your attention Alexei thank you as far as I understand you were, were able to resolve this task or there are still some things to resolve thank you very much for your question and this algorithm we were able to achieve optimal estimations but uh, it can raise the following question that we use the bias the the, the bison uh, bootstrap procedure that uh, requires the regeneration of the weights and this is quite uh, difficult now what is our end goal I would like to go one, back one slide and uh, here we uh, compute the quartile so we take and regenerate the uh, random 
distributions to compute the quantile. Now the science says that you should not compute a quantile, you should generate just one com uh, computation and with one observation, one random observation, you should uh, average the v-function that is there and uh, this is how you are going to receive a great uh, algorithm as it works great on practice but up until now no research group were able to move closer here like to understand that there are uh, optimal uh, uh, estimates for uh, these algorithms. Uh, there are some uh, estimations but they are not really uh, optimal. Yeah, it will be. Uh, if we resolve this task, uh, it will be very elegant and great. We do not know how to do it yet. Uh, can we use uh, the results of your work when we, uh, for example, uh, design driverless cars? Well, it's, it's a great question when we talk about reinforcement uh, learning. Uh, the driverless cars is the first thing that comes to mind. We have been talking a lot about the optimism that we should uh, risk. Uh, you know, you should go to a new coffee shop to try out some new coffee and new croissant. As for the driverless cars, the paradigm is quite different here. Here we have the optimism uh, paradigm. And as for the driverless cars, the pessimistic approach should be used because if, if there's something new on the road, uh, we should not uh, discover it, you know. Uh, you should be very cautious about it. And instead of the optimism, you should just uh, uh, convert optimism to pessimism. And then after that, in uh, some perspective, in some outlook, we'll be able to retrain our algorithm. There's a lot of work that we need to do. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about uh, the trains and about the helicopters, driverless helicopters. So yeah, well, maybe we will be able to use these uh, driverless spaceships to go on Mars. Well, I wish you all the luck and energy for that. Thank you very much. Thank you.